car, y'all. We, today, we are going to do a Anchoring 101. Everything you need to know about anchoring a boat. Now, this isn't anchoring a boat, the sandbar. That's a little different. I got a lot of videos on that, but this is just anchoring 101 terms, terminology, ratios, all that kind of good technical stuff. All right. So we're out here uh, in the bay. It's pretty windy. It's blowing 15 to 20. I'm sure you can hear it on the mic. Um, and so I'm just going to walk you through what I do here. All right. So first things first, I'm going to open my hatch. Okay, open this up. You want everything ready to go on the windlass. Okay. Uh, give it a test. Most boats are going to have a operation, a switch up here, and an operation switch at the helm. All right, I'm going to get into these terms later once I get anchored up here. But uh, to start, test it, check it, make sure it's good, make sure your clutch is tight. Okay, because if that clutch isn't tight, that's not going to come out. Um, now this anchor uh, outfit is outfitted with 25 feet of chain and about 600 feet of anchor line, and I'll explain all of that later and why we have the clutch. But uh, obviously the wind's coming out of this direction. So 101 to start, if you're in the bay watching the fireworks, whatever you may be doing, you're just hanging out, point the bow of the boat into the wind or tide, whatever is strongest. The wind can be blowing one direction, but the tide could be stronger moving another direction. And that's where you're going to put the bow of the boat, all right? So you really got to pay attention to is the wind stronger or the tide stronger? And the only way to do that is to get the boat stopped. To get the boat in neutral, observe your surroundings, see where the boat is headed. Now today in this bay, obviously it's the wind that's blowing really hard, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and get this bow of the boat into the wind. And it is 10 feet of water. And when I'm using a road setup, rope, anchor rope, um, I'm gonna use a five to one scope ratio. That's my general on average rule of thumb for uh, good conditions to average conditions like today. Now, if it's poor conditions, high winds, over 20, rough, then I might go seven to one. Might even go eight to one, just kind of depends. But today, five to one, we'll get it done just fine. So five to one, it's 10 feet. I need 50 feet of anchor line out ahead of the boat. All right, so I am in neutral, it's coming up. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and windless down. And I'm sure you're thinking, well, Will, how, uh, how do you know when you have 50 feet of line out, all right? Well, I'm listening to the chain. When I know that chain's out, I'm in 25. I've, I've got 25 feet already. So I'm probably already at the bottom. And I just heard the chain come all the way out. So it just went from chain to rope. And you can see the boat's twisting. The wind's blowing hard. That's okay. It's going to do that. I'm single-handed. I really can't operate the boat right now. If you had somebody else available to run the windlass, that's, uh, that's always helpful. But that's all right because the anchor is already grabbing. So right about there is going to be about 50 feet. And you can see the bow start pulling around. Just like so. And if the bow pulls around, you know it's hooking. Now once it comes straight in line with this wind here, then I need to check to see if I'm dragging. All right, so she's going to shift. She's going to dance a little bit. How do I know if I'm dragging? Well, number one, you look off to the side. Find a landmark, see if you're moving against that landmark. That's number one. Number two, you can put a, you can zoom in on your chart here. You can see where I put the anchor. I don't know why the track cut out. But now, I wanna put a mark right there, right where I'm at, eight feet. See eight feet in the corner? That's my mark, It's my waypoint. Now if I start moving drastically, this direction off that mark, then I know I'm dragging. All right. But I'm not dragging. We're all set up here. It hooked up just fine. Okay. Now let's go up to the bow. So we just talked about scope ratio, five to one. I got to have five feet, five feet of anchor line for every foot of water depth out ahead of me. 
if I do not get five that five to one out, the chances of the boat dragging are high. There's not going to be enough line out out in front of you on the bottom to hold the boat. Okay, that's why we have to have that ratio. Now, you see how horizontal the line is? That's good. The more horizontal that line is out, the more bowed out it is, the better that anchor hold's gonna be. If it's straight down, uh, right off the bow in a vertical direction, it's not gonna hold. It will eventually break loose, all right? We want it out ahead of us, out far. And that five to one will do that just fine. Um, obviously, if you don't have a windlass, you would need to cleat your anchor line to that cleat right there. Now, this has a windlass, and a lot of people won't do this with a windlass, but technically you should, is you should take the pressure off of this unit and bring the line over to the cleat. That's what the cleat's for. You don't want that anchor line tight on what we call the gypsy, all right? This, the gypsy is what the line falls into. The top here is the clutch, all right? We want that clutch tight, and it'll wear out these components over time strain on that windlass uh, if we constantly allow the weight of the boat to, to rest on this. It's always better for it to, to get it off that. So I like to raise this flapper. This is a quick windlass. Some uh, this, this has this little flap so you can uh, see what's going on down in the hole there. Uh, the Lumars, they don't have that. It's uh, a little frustrating sometimes with those because they can get bound up in here and knotted up. Um, so what I'll do is I'll take a little bit of slack out. I'll see if I can do it one-handed. Okay, bring this line out, bring it over to the cleats. And I generally, when I'm anchoring like this, generally I don't like to hitch it. And what do I mean by hitch it? I did a figure eight here. Generally, I don't do this. I don't hitch it. Because, I mean, you can in this situation as long as you do uh, a couple figure eights. But remember, all we're trying to do is take pressure off this. And I, if we have an emergency or something, I need to be able to get this off fast. I do not want it to be locked up. So figure A, maybe you can do one more wrap, something like that. But I want to be able to get that loose quickly. All right, so we just took the, the pressure off the windlass there and uh, we're good to go. Now the reason that we have 600 feet of anchor line on this boat is because we fish in 150 to 200 feet of water. Fishing out that deep, we gotta have a five to one. So that's why we have 600 feet, 25 feet chain. Um, obviously, that's not for everybody, but if you are planning on fishing that deep in the Gulf or the Atlantic, you gotta have that much anchor line. There's no way around it. People look at me like I'm crazy when I say that, but it just is what it is. You gotta have that amount of anchor line. So, being single handed in conditions like this is always tough to retrieve. Never want to retrieve your anchor using the windlass to pull the weight of the boat. That's not what it's designed to do. The windlass is not designed to act as a winch. It's not supposed to pull you forward. It's not that strong of a motor, okay? You're supposed to use the boat's engines and power yourself toward that anchor at the same time collecting and gathering that anchor line using the windlass, all right? So in this situation, I'm gonna to have to do that from the helm, especially in conditions like this, all right? So I'm gonna pull the flap up here. I'm gonna get this thing back into the gypsy, just like so, okay? And now this is where it gets tricky because I have to go run at the helm and I have no way of keeping an eye on this, but I'm gonna be very careful keep a little tension on the uh, line there that way I that way I can keep it in the gypsy and it'll come up it'll come up easy all right now the captain's job here is to keep the boat keep the bow of the boat in the direction of the anchor all right obviously the anchor heading is going to be upwind here so we don't want to bring the boat this way and we don't want to bring the boat that way we want to keep the bow of the boat heading toward uh, upwind, heading upwind in the direction of our anchor heading. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in gear here, pull the tension off of the windlass, and I'm going to try to get this bow around into the wind. Now I'm coming up with the windlass slowly, and you can see it's trying to start making its way that way. I am in for I am in forward right now. 
I'm gonna straighten up and keep coming up. Gotta keep the bow into the wind. Turn and port. I'm gonna go to neutral. Keep coming up. Do you hear it load down? It's still coming up. It loaded down. Oop, I'm at chain. You see that? Now look, generally when I'm at chain, I'll go ahead and come up here. Because now that anchor is not going to suck to the bottom here. And we can start working it. Now look, this is always a problem with windlasses. The splice from chain to rope always kind of gets bound up. It always likes to get bound up right here. All right? You need to go slow. You need to pay attention to that. See that? Lay it back in there. See, once it grabs the chain, it's good to go. And when you're uh, using chain, when you get to the chain, go slow. hold the button down right now is because any minute that anchor is about to pop up and when it pops up if it's not straight in that roller it's going to flip there it is right there see how it flipped it tried to flip on it but since i let go of the button it's settled perfect just like that and we can re-secure our chain safety chain Give it a wash down. They're good to go. So that's anchoring 101 for just a simple anchor out in the cove, anchor out in the bay, whatever you may want to do there. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.